we are back with Let's Talk Autism, and now we have a very special guest joining us from Ireland. Yes, we are very excited with it. He's got a lovely Irish accent. Rob Laffin is joining us. He's the CEO of Tippy Talk, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about what that is, although we have talked about a little of this uh, with a very special family we did. a couple he of weeks ago. By it. But first of all, welcome to Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy, Rob. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, great to be here. Uh, delighted for the, the opportunity to talk to you guys. Um, you mentioned my accent there, so if I'm uh, running away with my accent a bit, just pull me back. No, okay. we're loving it. We're, we do love it's it. It's a it vacation great. for us. It is. <laughs> I, 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 will, I will try and make things as clear and concise as I possibly can. Well, and you lovely. are the CEO and founder of Tippy Talk. Let's tell everybody again what Tippy Talk is. So first, tell us what it is, Rob. Okay, um, I'll start you from the very, very start. Uh, in 2010, I used to work as a pharmaceutical sales rep, and we had a very, very bad downturn in the Irish economy, and a lot of people lost jobs, including me. I spent uh, two years unemployed and decided to try and upskill my education to see if I could get a job, find out where the jobs were in my hometown. Everything pointed towards engineering. I enrolled in an engineering course then in 2012, and about six weeks into the course, we realized that my daughter had autism. Uh, and how old was, I'm sorry to interrupt, how old was she at the time? She was just gone her second birthday, but she showed all the signs that autism was there. Okay. Uh, my wife and I put two and two together and knew what we were facing and then we went down the, 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 the challenging road of trying to get a diagnosis. Right. So she got her diagnosis approximately a year later, but we knew what we were facing. Like, you know, it, it was all autism, all, all the signs of it there, the stimming, the, the, the non-interaction with us, the no eye contact, uh, toilet training was difficult. Uh, all the, all, it just ticked all the boxes. Aut autism was, was top of the list. So uh, while I was in college, I decided right there and then that I was going to do something or create something that would help my daughter. And it was initially to help my daughter. So I knew I was going to do something with the technology that I'd learned in the new, in the new course I was doing to, uh, to, 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 to help autism. In, in, in some sort of form or manner. So um, 2015 rolled around, I was just about to finish up my uh, uh, degree in, 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 in robotics and, and automation, and I got the brainwave of uh, how about creating Tippy Talk? How about a picture-based communication system that can on, not only translate to people in the same room, they can also translate text messages to people who are at the other side of the world, if needs be. And, and honestly, this is because, you know, there, there are many apps out there that deal with a picture exchange or an iconic communication system. But um, one of the things that, that I think is so amazing about Tippy Talk, it, and, and maybe it could only have been invented uh, by a dad who has a nonverbal child, is that you really understand all the things that come along with communication. And, and you talk very eloquently about communication being a, 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 an amazing privilege that people take for granted and that how isolating it can be when, when people don't have it. So, so talk about the difference with Tippy Talk and, and, and how you conceived this idea of communication without walls. Okay. <clears throat> So what happened originally was um, I created the device and uh, Sadie, my daughter, um, was using the kind of picture exchange communication system as it was. Mm -hmm. um, that had, it had its downfalls, it had its flaws. Um, she's sensory processing disorder, so there was a lot of chewing and ripping of, of PEX images. There was the three, four hours a night every Sunday that me and my wife would sit down with the printer and the laminator and get the next week's worth of pictures ready uh, to, to, to just have everything going, like, you know. So um, what I did was, uh, on the first original Tippy Talk, I programmed it with all of Sadie's unique images, images that she understood, images that she got, 
and there was no questions about about what was what or, or, or what she had to, to, to pick up to use something else like you know so I, I'll give an example uh, one of the images that I put on Sadie's uh, tippy talk screen was a picture of our fridge freezer in our home which uh, is so much more powerful when trying to teach it to somebody who's learning language because they're going to understand their refrigerator first absolutely absolutely so that was the kind of the, the start to the basis of uh, the whole uh, personalization side of tippy talk communication seemed to happen a lot faster when there was personal images that a pers that a, a, an adult or a child could relate to directly things that are in their everyday lives when it came to say these food selection Say these foods would have been put on her plate at her place plate setting by her chair at her table. So everything in the image was familiar. There was no confusion, there was no nothing. That's much mac and cheese. I'm gonna pick my mac and cheese. And then this translates into personalized text messages. Personalized text message. If I can get this walk in here, guys, I can give you a quick example. Um I don't. I hope you can see the screen. I don't know. Yes, we can. We've got. And we've got some images yeah, too. Yeah, we images where ourselves. We're showing uh, the folks at home. So that's just kind of a list of contact people that may be on a person's tippy talk. So maybe we want to talk to this lady here, Mom. We see it. Yeah. And it will say out the word loud. It's a bit bit too uh, difficult to, to to hear it now at the minute. So then it goes into a, a category screen, and I love this little one here. It's a Sadie says category. If I just touch it there. That's a picture of Sadie, and it says Sadie says. So you've got your basic communication inside there. So they're like, yes, no, hello, I love you, goodbye, whatever. And she often likes to tell daddy she or mommy she loves. loves. The green tick signifies then that the message has been sent. And just a second there now. I hope you can see it. You see it? The text message has just come through there. Yes, yes. mom. Yes. Sadie says, "I love you." Ah, oh, how wonderful! Which is so powerful because it, you know, well, there was always the limitation with with any kind of iconic communication system of that you had to be right there. Yes, and and, yes. and so many of us took for granted. Um, you know, I, my son's about to be 14 and I text him all the time at school and I'm able to communicate with him. And I got to be honest, Rob, that I hadn't stopped to think about the fact that, you know, that isn't available for to a everybody. lot of people no. um, because you don't think about what you don't know. No. no. Um, no. so this is brilliant. So what this, this led me down an even further journey to, uh, uh, I suppose I've been at Tippy Talk now for the last uh, year and a half, I suppose, between developing it and researching it and getting all the information I can need. But we've now identified a, a, something that's really, really, really important to the autism community and the community of, of disabled people at, at large. Uh, yes, not just those that, with autism, but there are many that can't communicate, those. correct? Yeah. Not just those with autism, but like we've we've got users from from very very elderly people who have uh, difficulty speaking to from stroke down to children as young as two and three who are using Tippy Talk successfully. That's but amazing. What this led us to develop is um, we found out now that uh, Tippy Talk is actually slowly morphing into a a, a platform for our nonverbal loved ones and individuals to be more, more socially included in society. Absolutely. Tell us about so, some of the impact it's had on people around the world. Can you tell us, share with us some personal stories? Sure, no problem. Uh, this is the best part of the job, being honest with you. Um, I get emails regularly from, from, from lots of different people around the world um, saying that, like, thank you so much. My, my son has communicated with me for the first time. He only asked for an apple, but it was a breakthrough. He got his apple. He's happy. Um, we've got a gentleman in the UK by the name of, I, I'll just say his first name. His name is Jamie. He's 22 years old. Um, Jamie uses Tippy Talk proficiently now to request um, what he's going to have for his supper from his dad. But the beautiful thing about this, 
when he texts his mom, it's all about feelings and emotions. So you can already see the divide that, that this gentleman has with a, a connection towards his father and his mother. His mother is the loving woman who gives him care and hugs and whatever, and his daddy is the doer. His daddy is he's the person who does things and gets things done. Um, we've had another contact from a lady in British Columbia. Her name is Wendy. She's got an eight-year-old daughter who, uh, who now communicates with her mom and her dad, even though her parents are separated. Uh, one of them lives in the US, one lives in Canada. But even it's brought that family closer together in a more communicative way because their daughter is communicating with both of them. It really is a very amazing thing. And, and you have pointed out um, that this has far-reaching effects, as, as you just talked about, with your relationships with people, but that that then feeds into the rest of your life and being able to work a job. And you really are breaking down barriers, Rob. It's, it's really amazing. And to know that it came from a dad who was looking for a solution for his daughter, it just it's, yeah. it's amazing. And this has actually helped Sadie. Tell us about that. In okay. terms of, she's improved. Uh, 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 the first, the first uh, uh, prototype I built actually um, filled it full of Sadie's images, and it was a big, uh, robust device that I soldered together and created. And took it broke my heart to get it right anyway. But anyway, uh, uh, I had it I had it inside our living room for about two days, and Sadie was interacting with it, but she was just sending meaningless messages that, that had no context to him whatsoever. I, I knew she was just getting used to the system. So uh, it was uh, March, sorry, April 2015. I had left my house and, um, oh, excuse me. I, uh, I got a text message from Sadie as I was entering a fast food, fast food outlet. Daddy, I want chicken nuggets. Uh -huh. <laughs> So needless to say, I went into the, the, the fast food outlet, tears down my eyes, yes. can I have some chicken nuggets, please? As I was leaving the fast food outlet, got a second text message, Daddy, get me some fries. <laughs> <laughs> some fries. Jumped in the car, I was a mile and a half from my house, came in the door with, with the chicken nuggets and the fries, and immediately she took them out of my hand and was delighted, went off into the corner, had her chicken nuggets and had her fries. So it was right then, at that moment, the feeling that I got from being able to communicate with my daughter, who's nonverbal, I knew right there and then I had uh, a social, a social obligation to try and pass on what I created to other family members just like mine. Amazing. And that, and that was the goal. Amazing. The things that other people would take so much for granted and, right. and yet and what a pivotal moment that your daughter can text you and say, I want Absolutely. chicken and fries. Uh, so how do people get this, Rob? Okay, it's at this moment, I'll, I'll actually tell you what's happening for the future. Uh, we're about 70% through the build of Tippy Talk version 2. So Tippy Talk version two is more or less uh, aimed towards the, the classroom situations. So uh, that uh, special needs assistants have communication with nonverbal students, teachers have communication, and it's gonna be a two-way communication option as well. At this minute in time, Tippy Talk sends one text, but you can't reply. So V2 will have a reply option on it, along with a, a lot of other uh, additional features. We are also creating a web portal system whereby the professionals or the caregivers can go in and log in at any time and track the data that their nonverbal individuals or loved ones are sending on a 24 hour, seven day uh, a week basis. So we're gonna chart and graph and map all that stuff out and feed it back to the professionals to try and help them in their profession as much as we possibly can. Uh, the more research we do actually, we're doing into it, this seems to be uncaptured data that's out there, and the academia are really trying to get their hands all over this to see what uh, metrics they can see that are behind it that possibly may help future research with autism. Wonderful. So V1 at this minute in time is just an app. It's available on the App Store, iOS. It's available on Google Play, and we just recently launched it on Amazon Kindle. 
Uh, the reason we put it out on Amazon Kindle is because the, the devices are pretty cheap. And if my child breaks a $60 device, I'm not going to lose sleep. If my child breaks a $600 iPad, I'm going to start losing some sleep. Right. If so, you get me. Yes. Absolutely. So and completely. Widely, yeah. widely accessible. And, and, and I'm on iPad number four. <laughs> well... Uh, I, I love that you're thinking in those kinds of ways because that helps more and more people. So they can get it at the App Store. Is there a cost associated with the app? Every single person that comes over to Trial Tippy Talk is automatically introduced to a 30-day free trial. It's a trial before you buy. If you feel that Tippy Talk makes a difference in your life and you're happy to continue, there's two options then after that. There's a monthly option of $14.99, or there's a yearly option of $99.99. And that's something we are working on as well with version two, to try and actually lower the cost of that. We're trying to get that under the $10 a, mark, $10 a month mark. Okay, a, a really reasonable, I mean, when I think about how much we pay for our cell service and text messaging, it's a really reasonable amount of money when you wanna be able to communicate with your child. Sure, uh, absolutely. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, sure. I was just agreeing with you. Sure, ah. absolutely. <laughs> okay. Uh, so again, so people can be checking these out. I am terribly interested in the academic version. You know, we've started something here on the show mm -hmm. called Autism in the Classroom. So I'm going to want to talk to you more about that. Sure. Uh, um, I've, got a, I've got a fairly substantial, uh, I, I suppose I'd call these guys famous in the autism world, uh, would be part of our advisory board. So um, I'll put it to them that I was talking to you guys. Yes. These, these guys have been keynote speakers at many, many conferences. Uh, they're well-respected, they're well-renowned in their field. And um, these guys are giving us all the advice and help that we need in order to make Tippy Talk version two the best it possibly can be. It's wonderful. Well, I, uh, I think what you're doing is incredible. Uh, and I also want to point out that some of it came out of adversity because yes. so many times our families go through moments where they think it's absolutely devastating. Yeah. And, you, and you told the story, but you kind of glossed over the fact that right at the same time you were losing your job and being unemployed for two years, your child was diagnosed with autism. And I'm just guessing that that wasn't a comfortable time. Well, do you know what? My, my attitude towards, uh, towards Sadie and her autism um, I I never beat myself with a brush or called or said uh, poor me my child is autism. My I had my I had my twenty four hours of a uh, uh, of a uh, I suppose to be miserable about it. But after that it was just a case of like okay she's got autism. Aren't I the lucky one? Aren't I the lucky one? I don't have to go and visit a gravestone every day to see my daughter. I don't have to go to a, a, a a ward where my where, where my daughter's terminally ill that I may say goodbye to her at any stage. I'm the lucky one. So with that attitude then it was up to me to say, okay, I'm gonna do the best I possibly can for my daughter. Well That's, you've done a great you, job. You sure have and for many others with autism and with so, other uh, so far, conditions so where they need to communicate. You've done you know, your disability was truly your opportunity in this case and you've made a great opportunity out of it. Absolutely. And I, I think it, I think it's a t it's time for a, for for. This is just my opinion, but it, it's time for people to stop grieving about the child that they could have had and just absolutely embrace and love and adore the child that they do have. So true. Because that's when you that's when you see so much benefits and so much coming out of them. Yeah. And Sadie is vulnerable now. She's starting. To, she is speaking. Uh, uh, 15 to 20 words. She has no days. Isn't that great? And you think that's because of the use of the app? Yeah. Yeah, she uh, just this morning, uh, I was a little bit late getting out of bed and I got a little kick in the backside and she told me to get out. <laughs> <laughs> I love so, it. Well, and you know, studies bear that out. So mm -hmm. often families go, oh, I don't want to use an iconic communication system. I don't want my child to have an augmentative assistive device. I want them to speak. But studies show very clearly the kids that get functional communication through those methods are the ones who speak absolutely quicker. Right. You're absolutely right. And studies show that 80% of kids that use AAC devices actually have a better chance of verbalizing than those that don't. 
That's right. Well, congratulations on that with Sadie. Tippy Talk. We absolutely love it. You'll have to come back, and, and when you've got version two up, you'll have to come back for autism in the classroom, and we'll have to do a demo. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Thank, Thank you for you joining so us. Much. Good luck to you and your family.